Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for another video today. If you are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Brittany. Um, I have been on a Manjaro Terzepatai journey for over a year and a half now at this point, and I love sharing all about that here on this channel. Um, and I would love it if you would subscribe, give this video a like, and drop the emoji of the day down below, which will be a moon. Don't know why. You guys know I just pulled these out of my head. And apparently I'm saying it in the beginning of the video today. Okay, so today we are going to be talking about the slow loser category um, on terzepatide, which is something that I've been promising I was gonna talk about for a while. I found a really interesting article on it and I couldn't figure out the way that I wanted to go about it. I actually did a ton of research and wrote a ton of stuff down in my notebook and I had this whole like script written out and I even filmed it and then I just didn't like the way that it came out. Like when I was editing it, I was like, I just, I don't think this is the best way to get this information across. So I did some thinking and I decided that the best way to share this with you is actually just to read you the article and to sort of comment it on it as we're going. I think that's the easiest way. I think that's the best way to get the information across. Like I said, I found when I filmed it, it with using like multiple sources and stuff. It was just like going everywhere. And like, this is really the information that I want you to have. So I'm just gonna bring it straight from the source to you guys. I will link this article down below as well. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and jump into it. If you, you probably can't even see this, but if you notice a huge little scab right there, um, <laughs> if you happen to spot that on my face, I actually, just had a mole removed at the doctor's office today. Today is the day that I went and had all of that blood work done that I was talking about with you guys. And I hopefully will have results within like, usually it's a, it's a couple of days, so probably by Monday. Um, and then we'll share that with you guys next week, like all of my blood work results. He's running a thyroid panel again as well, um, just because I do have a family history of thyroid not the exact type of thyroid cancer, but of a type of thyroid cancer. So um, he's running that as well. So we'll go over all of that and I'll show you all of my data and my blood pressure and my weight and all of that in a video next week. Uh, but he, I mentioned to him that I didn't like this little mole that I had that had actually popped up in, in adulthood. It's it hasn't been there more than like seven years, I would say. Um, and it really irritated me because I could see it like out of the bottom of my eye and I felt like other people could see it and it made my nose look big. Um, and so I just mentioned like, Hey, do you think that dermatology would take this off for me? And he was like, I'll take it off for you. And I was like, okay. So he did this little like slicing technique where it'll basically, and then froze it. So it'll basically just scab over and then be nothing. So that's what that is. If you happen to see it now, my phone locked on me again because I was talking for too long. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Again, I'm gonna read from the article, comment as we go about it. So this article was published in medpagetoday.com and it was written by Ed Sussman, who is a contributing writer on medpage.com and it was published on May 10th, 2024. Again, article will be linked below within the first two lines of the description. The title of the article is Slow Responders to Zepbound Achieve Meaningful Weight Loss Eventually. Um, and then a little side note of that it can take up to 20 weeks to titrate to the highest level dosage. So let's read a bit of this. The vast majority of patients with obesity who responded slowly to the once weekly injectable terzepatide, Zepbound, achieved meaningful reductions in body weight a year later, post hoc analysis of the Surmount 1 trial showed. In the study, participants who failed to shed 5% of their body weight at 12 weeks more than 90% ultimately achieved that clinically meaningful level of weight loss at 72 weeks with 30% of that initial, 30% of the people who were slow responders dropping at least 15% of their body weight reported Kimberly Goodson, who is an MD at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine in Baltimore. So, um, yeah, so if you are somebody, you were considered a slow responder, if you do not um, lose at least 5% of your body weight within the first 12 weeks. And traditionally, 12 weeks is when a medication would be deemed a failure, a weight loss medication would be deemed a failure, or you would move on to something else. Treatment would be halted at the 12 week mark if you hadn't lost 
that amount of weight. But what you'll see in this article and what it does show is that um, GLP-1s definitely, just like we're seeing in many other facets of this, need to be treated differently in terms of what is considered a failure if anybody is considered a failure. Because it even says right here, 90% of the people who were slow responders eventually achieved meaningful weight loss. So there was only 10% of the all of the slow responders that did not. So very small, little minuscule amount of people that could be considered non-responders to the medicine. Let's continue. It is reasonable to consider treatment for longer than 12 weeks to determine weight loss response to terzepatide, which takes at least 20 weeks to reach the highest dose, said Goodson, who presented the findings at the American Association of Clinical Endocrinology annual meeting. By 24 weeks, 70% of the slow responders lost at least 5% of their body weight. So if they did not meet the mark at 12 weeks, 70% of them had met the 5% mark by the 12 weeks later, by the 24 weeks. So not necessarily that they're non-responders, again, slow responders. So 70% of the slow responders lost at least 5% of their body weight, and that included 8% who lost 10% or more of their weight and 1% who lost 15% or more by 24 weeks. So um, you started to see, or what this shows is that there started to be a trend of the slow responders catching up, some of them still slowly and some of them kind of catching all the way back up, um, but all of them starting, 90% of them starting to lose some weight. Guidelines suggest, this is what I was just talking about, guidelines suggest switching weight loss medication if a 5% reduction in body weight isn't achieved at 12 weeks. And um, that was noted by the moderator, Captain Thon Hong, I hope I'm saying that right, who is a DO at the Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland. But the old saying, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, might be apt in the setting of the newer anti-obesity medications, such as terzepatide and semiglutide, which is Wagovi. If I had a patient, and this was a quote by him, if I had a patient on terzepatide who was making some progress on terzepatide, I would continue the patient until I had gone through the full titration regimen, said Huang, who was not involved in this specific study, but he was at that endocrinology meeting and he was overseeing the commentary on it. Um, but if there was no substantial progress after the six month mark, I would likely stop the treatment. So this is saying essentially that it's prudent to give terzepatide, semiglutide, whatever, longer than the traditional long thought 12 weeks um, to really deem it a failure or not. Surmount trial one or Surmount one was part of the trial program that led to the FDA approval of terzepatide, which is a combination glucagon, glucagon like peptide one and a glucose dependent isinolotropic polypeptide receptor agonist for treating obesity. So the Surmount one trial got it approved for obesity, and it notes that the drug was first approved in 2022 for diabetes under the brand name Manjaro. High demand for the weight loss formulation of terzepatide has already led to massive shortages. The primary results of Surmount 1 showed that people taking the highest dose, 15 milligrams, once weekly lost an average of 22% of their body weight at 72 weeks, with lower doses also demonstrating weight reductions of 16% at 5 milligrams and 21.4% at 10 milligrams. So the post hoc analysis presented by Goodson, who is the doctor that was at the endocrinology meeting, focused specifically on the patients in the Surmount 1 study who were considered to be uh, slow responders, okay? Um, the, she also had a focus on the people that were adherent to terzepatide, meaning these people received 75% of the doses of terzepatide, meaning a lot of them were not on the... Uh, why can't I think of the word? The one that wasn't the medicine. <laughs> Why can't I think of the word? Somebody will say it down below. Um, and so they had an average weight, they had weight measurement data taken at zero, 12, 24, and 72 weeks. It included 278 patients who failed to achieve a 5% weight loss reduction at 12 weeks with the drug slow responders 
and 1,267 individuals who did. So she studied overall 278 plus 1,267 individuals, kind of those specific people. And uh, of those, the 278 did not respond as quickly. And these were her findings based on that. So for inclusion in the study, participants had to have obesity, which meant they had to have a BMI of 30 or more. They had to be overweight or be overweight with a BMI over 27% and one other weight related condition, which could be um, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, something like that. Patients were assigned to maximum doses of five, 10 or 15 milligrams. So everybody had an assigned maximum dose and everybody started at two and a half milligrams. Patients assigned to five milligrams switched to that dose at four weeks and stayed on it the remaining amount of time through the 72 weeks and so on and so forth. So if you were assigned one of the higher doses, you would move up every four weeks until you reached the max dose of 15 milligrams, which took those individuals that were assigned 15 milligrams 20 weeks to reach that top dosage. At baseline, the slow responders tended to be older, interesting, compared to with the early responders. Uh, so 46.7 um, was the average age of slow responders and 45 was the average, so just slightly older. They were more likely to be men. 44.6% of them were men versus just 30.6 of the normal responders were men. They weighed more. They weighed pretty a pretty significant amount more, 110.2 kilograms versus uh, 103.6 kilograms. So seven, almost seven kilograms more um, they weighed if they were considered. So they were considered to be older men who weighed more is essentially what this is saying. And they had a higher BMI of 39.1 versus 37.7. Um, so the mean time to reach a 5% weight reduction was 24.8 weeks for slow responders and 12.7 weeks for early responders or normal responders. At 72 weeks, slow responders had lower rates of weight loss compared with the early responders. So while they did not catch all the way back up, it's important to note that they did. Okay. So um, the comparisons that I'm about to give you is slow responders versus early responders. So um, a greater than 5% weight loss, greater than or equal to 5% weight loss reduction, 90% versus 100%. 10% it was 10% uh, weight loss, 59% versus 97%. 15% weight loss, 30% versus 84%. So it does definitely get more drastic as we go. Um, greater than 20% weight loss was 17% versus 65% and greater than 25% of weight loss, 7% versus 41%. So this definitely does show that if you were one of the people who was an early or a normal responder, you are going to eventually um, or you are going to lose weight at a much quicker rate that's going to continue. But I do think that it also gives some good feedback for people that are slow or non-responders that you can eventually reach your goals. It just is going to take you significantly longer than the early responders. Now, I have mentioned before, I'm gonna you know insert my own little opinion here. I have mentioned before many times that I believe in, you know, I've spoken to many medical professionals who, who have kind of hinted at this as well, including my own doctor. Um, but I believe that it has something to do with how much of the GLP-1 hormone you naturally have in your body. Um, I think that can alter how quickly you respond and what dosage you respond at. So some of these people that were slow or non-responders, maybe their body didn't start responding until the 10 milligram, the 12 and a half, the 15 milligram, versus people who had a higher level of that hormone naturally in their body um, could be considered the early responders. I, when I filmed this video the first time I mentioned, this is something that I wanted to make sure I mentioned again, I would love for there to be a way to gauge the level of this hormone naturally found in each person's body and to do like a preliminary testing on your GLP-1 levels before um, you start the treatment to see if you do have drastically different amounts naturally than people who respond more slowly or more 
quickly than you or whatever. And I also think it's important to know how quickly because our bodies all absorb and process hormones differently. So many of us are, you know, we might have a higher amount, but then like you, your body burns through it faster. So there really is just so much going into it. But I do think that if you break it down like that, that that is the root of it, that people who respond faster at lower dosages have a higher natural promotion of the hormone in their body than those who don't respond as quickly do. I was trying to keep my finger on it so that it wouldn't lock on me again, but I was not successful. So in her conclusion, Dr. Goodson said that future studies are warranted to better understand the variability in weight loss response to terzepatide. And that is the end of the article. And that is kind of what I was just saying is that we do need to do more studying on why people respond at different times and at different levels. Um, and I can sit here all day and say, you know, with very, um, I do have some medical knowledge, but not, you know, I'm not a doctor. I think that for me to be able to sit here and say that really means nothing. It's just an opinion, of course, but um, I think that it makes sense in my mind and it, and it warrants a little bit of a question. So I would love to see like somebody develop a test on that hormone level. It may even exist. I don't know. I'm just shooting the, shooting the crap here. So that was the article and I found it very interesting because there are a lot of doctors that I have noticed people, you guys will share with me, um, that they've stopped you on the medicine after a certain amount of time because you just didn't respond to it or whatever. I have a friend personally who might be watching this video if you are, hey girl, hey Christina, um, <clears throat> who stopped taking it because she said after a, a long period of time that it just didn't work for her. And I, you know, there was that 10%, that was a true thing that was there, but I think it's interesting and it would be a good sort of review for all physicians to read over that study to say, hey, in the end, 90% of the people did start to lose weight and did achieve meaningful weight loss that could change their life. I think that's really cool. So uh, yeah, that's a study that I wanted to share with you guys. I will link it below and I will also link the other articles that I had pulled various resources from for like the notes that I made. It didn't necessarily uh, uh, necessarily like talk specifically about this study. It was more so like inserting bits of information, but I will link them all below. Um, one of them was specifically from Eli Lilly's website, which gave a pretty good summarization of both the Surmount 1 study and the Surmount 2 study. So definitely worth taking a little bit of a read if you are anything like me and are like a total geek about this medicine. When I went to my doctor today, he was mentioning that uh, we were talking about all the different things that this medicine can, can do for you. And he was mentioning that he's having a lot of his cardiology friends mention that they're starting to prescribe Ozempic for cardio related things because it has been proven to reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke um, in, in individuals. So I think that's just so cool that um, GLP ones, and I, I said that to him, like, could you imagine 15, 20 years from now, the difference in the overall health of America and the world, but America, where obesity is so prevalent, I think one of the facts that I saw was 40% um, of Americans are obese, 40%, which is absolutely ridiculous. So could you imagine 20 years from now, what it may look like for us? So I just think that's so cool. Um, so yeah, if you found this video and this article interesting, let me know down below by dropping a moon emoji and anything else you would like to say to me. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm actually going to be unboxing my compounded terzepatide with you guys on the next video, which I'm about to do now. It came today. Um, and I know a lot of you are curious about how it comes packaged and how, you know, the whole process. So I was gonna, you know, just make a little video going over that. So that is what I'm about to do now. So that is the video you guys will see next. Until then, I hope you guys have a great weekend and I will see you next week. Bye guys.